professional. There you go. Here I go what? And we're live here at Ravelin Sports Centre, where the Portsmouth Force are taking on the Worthing Thunder later today. And whilst we prepare for that game, we've got the National League under 18s playing, Mark. What do you so think they are so under far? 18s. That was my first question today. Was going to be they're under 18s. This is National League. I can't work 18s. out if they're under 18s or under 16s. No. And you know what? There's one of the players for the under 18 is I actually mean, playing for the men's every now and then. That's number 15. Kai there's some t- there's some tall guys for under 18. There are some tall guys. You know, it's not a bad standard. No, it's not a bad standard at all. And I like the kit. I know we 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 always like the aesthetics of stuff, don't we? But yeah. There you go, friends. And, you know, head coach for the uh, National League under-18s is Tom Milner, who was on the show. I believe that was, like, episode four, five, or six. Oh, blimey. You're testing my brain now. Something like that, Something like that. Let me have, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, what, Mark, we're doing this because you, we had people definitely have asked me what it's like who, who haven't seen us uh, when we're actually uh, yep. live at a game. Well, this we is, are this real is human we people. Like. We're not AI. I know people think that maybe that you are, in fact, AI. Possibly. I know my voice doesn't match my face, apparently. Wow. <laughs> that is the feedback you've had. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, what a great drive. Oh, there you go. Two points for the big man. Number eight. Um, no, it's nice. It's nice It's nice actually seeing um, the youth teams playing. Because uh, it's going to sound really a bit weird, but, you know, I don't have any kids in this league. You know, my daughter's way too young. So, when would I actually go and watch a game like this? Like, yeah. in all honesty. So, it's it's kind of nice to see that sort of thing. Uh, oh, big car walker. It's it's, it's good out. seeing the, the way that the kids are playing because you can see that they've got the court vision and they know where they want to put the ball, but they just don't maybe have the experience or the physical ability to get it there. Yeah. It's like that finish, isn't it? The finishing part is just like the, I won't say it's like the only bit left, but you can see they're already thinking, I want to go here and drive there and cut here. And this is where I want to take the ball. It's not just, I won't say head down, old school basketball and just dribble, dribble, dribble sort of thing. Yeah, and here we go. We've got big man Alex Grant walking past us today. Hopefully his knee injury is getting better. He has not got his knee taped up. So that's a good sign. And it that looks is a like good sign. Portsmouth might be playing in, in their away yellow kit today, Mark. Ah, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the yellow, I'm on, if I'm honest. You know what? It was the historical colour that the, the Portsmouth Smugglers always wore. And when we played yep. National League for the Portsmouth Smugglers, it nope. was always, that was the yellow. It when was we like did yellow the, with blue trim. When we did the B, the oh, last... What, behind the back whoa, pass. That was a great away. pass. That could be called as a travel. That was a great number pass. Number 21. But um, ref didn't see it that way. Couldn't quite get the finish on it, but that was, yeah, that was very smooth. Oh, the ball when we did the BBL one, we we uh, were talking about um, the different coloured kits, and one of the ones we mentioned was, uh, I think it was Cheshire's, was it Cheshire Phoenix who had the yellow kit? Who was it who oh, had the, the yellow Manchester kit? Manchester Giants. Oh, it's the nice, Giants. The Giants really have the yellow, nice kit. yellow kit. That's right. See, I'm getting them mixed up already. But that kit, I was saying, I don't remember many yellow kits, but of course, Indiana, in fact, play with a yellow kit. Yeah, they did. They did. What a pass there by the away side. The Phantoms were a great pass. Paul, would you say this game would be improved if the badminton lines were removed? Oh, 100%. So, uh, like, look, it would be vastly improved. Get rid of the badminton lines, you can the tennis lines, the football lines, the foosball one, two, lines. One, two, three, Get four, rid of all of that. Five. All of that crap. There's five different colorations on the floor. It, you, you know what used to drive me nuts, and I, I really struggled with it sometimes, because I'm a partially colorblind. Wow, he called that travel. Because um, I'm partially colorblind, when I think at the Mount Batten Center, the, the actual basketball lines were yellow. Yes, yeah. Rather than like black, that's fairly obvious once you're in tune with it. But, um, you know, they were yellow, so a lot of the time I'd run down the court and be like, just run out the court. Um, run out the sidelines. And look, for the first time in Ravelin history, we've got sponsors putting, um, what do you call those? The, like the, the, like they're the boards. banners. They're banner boards. Banner yeah. boards. The but banner they're, boards the, they're pop-up banners. 
which are quite handy because they all pop up banners mean um, it's a little bit easier to carry around for a start. Definitely, definitely lighter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you going to put the background music to this? Because so many people tell me they love the background music. Are you going to be putting that? Yeah, That's why what, not? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. We'll look back in the... Well, I'll look back before we do the uh, cut and we'll see how much of the game is coming through, actually, because it'd be nice if some of you guys can hear the game that's going on. This, yeah, this is not artificial uh, s sneakers on the floor. Th these are... And that Ooh. is an air ball. That is an air ball at the, the end of the you third did, uh, quarter. Buzzer ball. Hail Mary at the end. And we have got Portsmouth Fury, legend and newcomer. Wow. He, he's, he, he's quite proud that he's wearing smuggler colours today. And that's... Legend Harry Bates. What's worrying is he just walked past that high vis jacket, and it blended quite nicely with the yellow <laughs> shorts. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. So I mean, j just for the listeners, what, what as you get, I think it's 200 people in. You need two people with high vis jackets as, you know, safety monitors. That yeah. Kind of and if you don't do that, you then have to hire a private security. Firm. Private security. Yeah. And, and then for then every, is it 100? Every hundred, you need another person. Yeah, so yep. not that you you can't see us because I've deliberately put out a shot, but here is the official, official Portsmouth Force high vis jacket that I I will wear if required, but I try not to. It depends <laughs> how many fan how, how many fans turn up tonight, but let, let's hope it's yeah I mean, under five hundred. Otherwise, I have to wear that. If you had jaundice or anything like that, it, it probably wouldn't look that good with with the yellow, would it? But yeah, no, it's a, it's um. It is nice seeing a different team on there. And it also makes you appreciate how many people turn up for the Seed News team. Yes. Like there's, you how think. How many sponsors we got? It's the Croxtons. Sponsors galore. The Croxton sponsors. If you haven't had a burger at Croxton's, you're you missing, missing out, out in life. We that haven't. Is, that is a fact. We have, have we established that they got chicken burgers? Uh, I, I, they got all types of burgers. Because I don't eat red you, meat, but you, I will eat, chi I'll eat chicken burgers. You name the burger and they got it, Mark. And just to clarify, I am not a vegan. And I just don't eat red meat. I don't want to undersell them. I want to... What a move. That was a great what move. What a move. By number 11. Number 11, fair play. Drove in. Spin play with the nice ball. Nice little pivot there. Unfortunately, threw up a brick. And then number 17 for the Phantoms. Grabbed that rebound. And I, almost dunked it in someone's face. I think even at my fittest, I'd have probably tripped over myself at that point, and my head would have just been going to, hurtling towards the floor. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and um, Rob Milner, chairman of the Ports of Force, he's in the background. He's just just outside the court. Um, got a few players coming through now, haven't we? Yeah, a couple of players. We got you know big Gafe, Gafe, uh, um, and walking past us. Is last year's MVP Simon Olney Pearkun? We got two, one in, one out. There you go. One Captain in, one Ollie out. Blake's here. So eating his know, banana. We're, we're in the fourth quarter now of this National League Under 18 game. So do you think that's a ritual banana? Yeah, I, I, he needs that energy. The, the amount, the amount of mileage he does during a basketball game, he needs that banana. And uh, you know the players are. One move. The players are, uh, the men's team are coming in now, getting ready. Um, tip off is just under 80 so minutes. How, away. how recently has it been that we're doing now the under 18 games before the force games? Historically, we used to do it. Um, me personally, I, I, this, is, this is the first time. Um, historically, it used to happen quite a lot, you know, in the, in the, you know, there's so many, uh, I got a question, Mark. I got a question that, yep. um, the actual ring itself. Now this happens quite a lot. We get distracted. Um, I got a question the ring yep. because that is what? Four out of five plays where it looks like a fairly decent shot, quite close to the basket has gone up and it's rimmed out. And they shouldn't be rimming out. I mean, that was a basic layup, and it that kind of is, bounced off. And I've got to think that is super rattly. That this this end is that, definitely super rattly. I think if if you go and look at it from an angle, you can see it. I think the ring is in need of modernisation. Well, you say modernisation. Look at the building. Yeah, I mean, you need you to think, replace. You don't get more modern than this building. But the thing is, look. look they, if they're going to replace that, they might as well just pop them in the centre, and then we can have bleachers both sides. <laughs> 
Um, and yeah, so we get, uh, apology. I I, uh, I cannot multitask, so I'm just um, here. You go, big Israel Bello walking past, and again another brick off that ring. Mark. Another brick. It's at six. At, sorry, five for six now. That backboard. Sorry, not the backboard. The actual rim. It needs replacing. If I'm honest, and, like you got National League players coming down here and absolutely dunking the crap out of it. It's um. So why is there one ref? What, today? No, oh, it's two. No, there's the second one back there. He, he's a young guy, so he, he blended he, in well. I was about to say, he is, and he's like stealth. Something I forgot to tell you, and I think it's a really interesting... Again, look, that's six for seven on that ring. Um, you could use that to your advantage. You definitely use that to your advantage. It is, I would say it's very forgiving um, with a jump shot. Uh, Harry Milner in the game. The National League under 18 team. He shows a lot of hustle. There you go. Six for eight. One actually went in. Um, so, yeah. Mark is distracted once again. A lot going on before the game. Daddy duties. Um, Daddy so, duties. Well, what I wanted to tell you, and I thought it was a really valid point, which was um, when it comes to refereeing, and I forgot to tell you about this on the podcast. Yep. When it comes to refereeing, there is, uh, I think they're running it in Australia. Yep. Man, that is close. They're running it in Australia, where is, if a referee is under 18, yep. they'll wear like a very bright yellow lanyard All right. for the whistle. So it's really clear when you like see it. Like their training bra, basically. Well, it's very clear this is an under 18 referee. Harry, don't steal the children's food. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's what I'm saying. It's very clear it's an under 18 um, referee. No, that's good. And I think it's a great idea that they should adopt in, it's your in, in, plates, in, the, isn't it? in the UK. Well, yeah. Everyone should be respectful for a referee, someone trying to get into a game, but especially when they're just starting out, you want to try and take away that aggression or that, you know what I yeah. mean, that drama. Um, and I, I saw that and thought, what a great idea. Um, and I don't think that guy is under 18, but he might be 18. Um, even, I mean, if, even if it was under 21, you do it. Yeah. Hey, we got... Legend Andy Rowland's walking past us now. He is definitely Team Pink. Definitely early on the podcast. What was he? Three? He was three or four, I think. Uh, yeah, he was number four and number five, I believe. Wow. So pretty much, if you want, if you're a fan of the podcast, come down Which, here. Which of course oh, you are. Block. Oh, it's called an offensive foul there. I actually called an offensive foul. You know what? That that was a strong block. That was a strong block. Yeah. There's a there's a <laughs> that, there's that a good viral a little shaken up with that. There's a little viral clip going around at the moment of someone who did a, a push off. It's a a kid, maybe an under eighteen player, and he he gives the the sort of lean like this, but because he doesn't actually use his arm, he's leaning with the body, and the body and the other person is checking him. They're like it was clean. And you look at him, and think mm, he was looking for the contact. Uh, okay, but. It is. It's actually. You look at it and think that's a pretty grown-up move, to be honest, yeah. because he was looking for the contact. So the guy came to give him the contact, and then the ref had to let it play out. Whereas if the he hadn't, the other guy hadn't come up squared to him, he, he'd have probably had the offensive on him. Some nice ball movement. What a drive! I don't know that guy's name, but number ten for the Ports of Force. What a drive in! Caught the ball at the top of the three-point line, just drove through the left-hand side, through the lane, boom, and one. Nope. And you know what? What you hear now is so frustrating when you're oh, trying to do don't. an interview. Yeah. Bing, bong. That was nice. It was testing as well. I'm doing a test. Well, thank you. I heard your test. Right. Can you do a test? I'm not going to get. We won't get this shot. guy on the mic. We, we won't get him on camera. But the, the mascot, who no one knows, is the mascot. Has just walked past yep. us. He's had a shave today. He has had a shave. There's blue. No yeah, one knows why, would, why would you do a test in the middle of a game? You know there's a game on at the moment. Oh, that could have been called a foul, but what? Do they, it's like, do they do a smoke alarm test at Wimbledon? Sorry, uh, wait, we know you're out on the court, but can you just... 
Well, everyone go back to your lockers. I think, I think the mascot nice has forgot he's not wearing the mascot suit and he can't just walk on the court during a game. He, uh, he's <laughs> License revoked. <laughs> Right, well, look, for anyone who wanted to see what it was like for a game, you've got a bit of a visual of me and Mark. You have and, got a visual. And you've uh, hopefully... Uh, unlucky for you. Uh, ...a bit of uh, um, an idea of w what it's like. You know what? And, and, and these guys just walking out now, they're the, they're the, the force, force physios. So they, they actually are a big part of the setup, making sure the guys are warming up properly, warming down properly. Any injuries, like, they deal with it. Yeah. Then and there, you know what? The professionalism from that side of it is just gone up yeah um and most I think, definitely I, I think there's two or three of those guys i think there's three physios in total but you know what it's nice the time now is you know we're just a a, a little over uh, an hour till tip off but you know <laughs> some of the supporters who are coming early are starting to walk in now and um you on know it's about to get loud in there it is going to get loud on the flip side it does having this in here does mean Normally, we'd be in setting up, doing sound checks and doing everything like that at this point, getting ready. It does mean we have a much smaller window. Obviously, you did this today. Yeah, I mean, I came down and here. You well, came down here super early, like well, three o'clock or whatever. Well, three hours before tip-off. Yeah. Set the stuff up and, you know, we're ready to, ready to roll. But it's nice because I didn't want to be setting stuff up and be doing stuff really late. Look. Right, I'm not under pressure to do anything. No, though. no, absolutely. But also, we get to do this. I know people wanted to hear it. Yeah, I'm sure we'll chop some bits and pieces in and out of this because we've had various distractions and whatnot. But I think I think it's good because it it it's, it shows what happens. When oh, you're here, I mean, you're here and you're talking away and you're doing stuff, and then all of a sudden, someone's asking. Player comes around. Dad, can I have my food? <laughs> Dad, where's the toilet? Or if someone hey, asks you if someone can play and then that player just, or are they still injured and then they walk past you and you're like, hey, are you playing today? And they're like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know, quite okay. impressive. I mean, we've actually had to, Paul's idea was put the camera right up in the front. And to be honest, it's probably worked quite well for us because we, he, he, if we'd have put Ooh. it back where it would have been a bit better focused, everyone would have just been walking in front of this. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just oh, no, people coming in and out, in and out. That's good. And we've a huge sponsor there. Cosgrove Painting Contractors Limited. Wow. you got to get those glasses on. What did it, does it say? Limited. That's it. Oh, yeah. What did I say? I, I, I don't know. You were having a stab, though. You had a few goes. <laughs> and this is... Going to have to get your, uh, your special um, Winston Churchill little specs on. Oh, I haven't, I haven't got him down. Damn it. There's a... There's a player down here just trying to get his name because he's, he's playing pretty well. But that's worth knowing. Like people see, there's a player name, there's a sheet, there's a hole. Uh, you have to get all this information from the people that you're playing against as well. Yeah, and I, I have that all in front of me. And what I tend to do is if I... I've just got this box. I'll, sh I'll show everyone what this is. This is what we've just got here on the... Right. We've got this, so this is for the Talking Basketball podcast, but on the back, you have got the fixtures. Um, so let's, see if, let's see if I focus it in. There you go. So Might focus up now. I think that's great. Look, people put it in their wallet, they know when the game is. Yep. Um, but yeah, so this is what I tend to have. I've got, I have this and I have all my notes. Oh, jeez. That oh, sounded that was like a bang. hurt. Easy, right? Yeah. Dusted that one off. He dusted that one off, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I have all my notes in here, and, you know, when I'm calling players and stuff, I'm just referring to this. And this is what I use for all my notes. You'll see I'm writing stuff um, during the game, and um, this is what I keep all my notes. And this is a, a potential future um, guest on a podcast. Future victim. I won't say his name, just in case he doesn't turn up, but I was trying to get him to come. And that is a referee. <laughs> No, we, we, we want everyone. We hold no grudges. Well, he, he's done... Um, Except traffic warden. If national, someone was a traffic warden, they're not coming in. Or badminton player. Oh, um, what about the person who puts the badminton lines down? They even knowingly worse, even put worse, it. Even worse. <laughs> um, so I, I don't want to... I won't say his name, but he has done National League, Div 1, all the way down to Div 3, 4, whatever. 
He is well versed um, in referee and National League. Well, um, but also he started doing BBL games. So he ha he's done a, he's done a handful of BBL games. So well, let's you know see what? if we can tent him into the lair. Ooh. I thought he was going to slam that one down. I thought he was going for he, that then. He, he, he picked that up like, here mm. we go. I thought and he was going for minute, that. He just turned his hand, hand around and just released a little teardrop into the basket. Wow, behind the back pass here from the same Ooh. player. That would have been slick otherwise. This is a... He's definitely a strong player. Game. Yeah. I mean, look, Portsmouth... He's wearing Luca's number. Yeah, that's probably, what he, yeah, probably why, you know, big K Walker again you know he, he was hoping for a call there but you know the phantoms are way too quick oh great play there phantoms are way Good too play. way play. too quick and um, I think I'm not being harsh there's three minutes left in the game They're down by 15 they've been down by 15 the entire second half this game yeah. is over really isn't it but um, it's had its moments but I think the Phantoms probably, for this, I think they won it in, in the first half easily. Yeah, I think probably it's fair to say. first quarter. I mean, you're gonna, all you're going to do now is it's going to be one for one, isn't it? And you notice, the, I don't know if you can pick up on that, but the crowd get louder now. As more and more people get in, and the crowd get louder. Yeah. Slowly yeah. people filtering them. Yeah. One of the advantages also being a university town is obviously, and having the connection here at Raflin, is that you're going to get some of the students turn up in the evenings as well, which is nice. Yeah, because it makes it a, you know, it's very difficult when you think of a, a Division Three team. Um, there's lots of people there who, in the crowd, you're going to have your friends and family. Yeah. So it's a bit like someone doing a gig at a pub, and you you got a lot of your friends or your mates turn up for each of your players and for each of the teams. Um, but we're getting like 300 people plus here. And there's not that many players. Yeah. So, unless someone's got, unless there's a five or six players with really big families, like we're getting a lot of people turn up who are enjoying the atmosphere and enjoying just watching some basketball, which is nice to see back in town. And I just just noticed Alex Alex Grant has got his knee taped up there, so the physio has just done it now. So uh, I don't know if it's permanent or not. Though it's probably a sensible thing to do. Still struggling with that by the looks of it. Probably a sensible thing to do. Let's given ask him. An injury. Alex, how's the knee? No, we're live. No, yeah, we're, we're live. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, kind of, kind of good. Here you are. It's big Alex Grant. It's the second appearance. Hello, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, hello. Oh, we got a recording Oh, look, he's as on. Well. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, got your pretty face on it. People, people wanted to see our faces, Alex. Wow. So we thought, let's let's do do it live here. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> right, should we wind this up? Absolutely. Do you want some outro music, Mark? No, I'll put it all on the, I'll put it all on the intro. Would you like to do the outro music? Go yeah. on. Go on, do some outro music there. Well, look, I, I've got some more sounds in this one Go as on well. Then. Boom. Yeah. This is what you At need. At which point are you remembering that I don't have headphones, so I can't hear you? Oh, <laughs> good Good point. Good point. <laughs> wow. Oh, that makes so much more sense. At the start, what a no-look pass. But anyway, yeah. we're saying goodbye live at Ravelin Sports Centre as the Portsmouth Force gear up to take on the Worthing Thunder. Here's the thunder. Here's Worthing Thunder today. Worthing Thunder. Yeah. Are you going to say it with that much passion later? Yeah. Oh, the Worthing Thunder bit, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Well, you've got to be neutral, remember? Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. Good night from me. Good night from me.